Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to share with you an interesting way to prepare vegetables that's easy, quick, and extremely nutritious. It's a technique called braising. And for those of you out there who are foodies, it's called quick braising. You're going to need a large saute or frying pan like this one with a tight fitting lid because we're going to be steaming a lot of this up. I am just going to heat up my pan on a medium, medium high heat is what you're going to need to do here. So while that is heating up, and I think I better crank it up so it gets good and warm for us. We'll talk about the vegetables that we're going to use. Now I find that three vegetables works really great for this dish. Then you get to have a whole variety for your family. Start with fresh vegetables. This does not work with canned or frozen vegetables. It really works the best with fresh. So when you go to market, pick the vegetables that you know your family likes and build on that. Fresh green beans work really, really well. And to that, I've chosen asparagus for color. And for a more intense flavor, I'm going to use red and yellow bell peppers. Now, if your family isn't really crazy about asparagus or the peppers, carrots work really well as well. And that's really good. So. Now for preparing these vegetables, after you buy them, get them home and get them all good and washed and, and sorted, trim them in long strips all about the same size. As you can see here on my tray today, I've got the green beans, the peppers and the asparagus are all about four inches long. That way they'll make sure and cook at the same rate. That's really important too. Now as far as quantity for this dish, you're just get this is so easy. This is so simple. You really don't have to think I need a certain pound. You just do this by your eye. You're going to want one layer in the pan because you want this to braise and get all the flavors as you're going to see in a minute. So you can adjust each one of the vegetables to take up about a third of the skillet. One skillet, that's just your regular 10 inch skillet, will serve about two to four people. But if you want to make this dish for a large group, you can do this in a roasting pan or a 13 by nine baking dish in the oven. And I've put those directions on the website for those of you who want that. However, for today, we're going to make this in a skillet. And I can tell that my pan is getting warm. So what we're going to do to start with, you've got your, your pan good and hot, because remember, we always add our fats and oils to a heated pan, and that prevents the food from sticking, something that it took me a long time to figure out. Okay, so I'm going to add two tablespoons of oil. I can tell that's pretty good and warm. Now, add your oil first. You know why? Because the oil has a higher temperature that it can stand heat, and the butter may not. And if by chance I got this too hot, then the butter might just get a little bit too brown, and I don't want that. Let's add a little bit more. Okay, I've got my olive oil, so I'll just kind of swish that around, and then a tablespoon of butter. Now, yes, this butter is a good butter. Conjugated linoleic acid, good for you. Remember, there's healthy fats. Dr. Becker talks about on the show all the time about the good fats. We need those in our system, too. So we're just going to let this kind of melt. If it starts to smoke, don't worry. We're just going to take it off the heat for a moment, turn it down. You want to brown this until the butter turns a nutty brown, but not scorched. You'll know when you smell it. Now we're going to turn that down to just like a medium. Now you don't be afraid to adjust according to whether you have electric or gas burners or how you cook. That's looking just perfect. I really want that butter just a little bit browner though. That is at the melted stage, which is really nice, but I want it brown. This is what brings out the flavors. That's looking really good. Just takes another second sometimes, a little patience will do it for you. Now I'm going to start adding my vegetables one at a time and keep them in the certain area of the pan together. Okay, let's go with our asparagus. Again, we're just going to put it in thirds and I tell you, that's getting really good, I like that. And some green beans, get my tongs here. Get your green beans in there. I think it takes about a half of a pepper of your red and your yellow. And then you just kind of want to kind of get this moved around a little bit so they can coat up. And that's really nice. Now here's a neat little tip. This gives it even more interesting flavor. We're going to add some shallots and leave them in the pan for the whole cooking process. If you can't find shallots, don't worry. You can use regular onions. I've got red onions. I've got yellow onions 
and I've got shallots, so either one that works or that your family like works as well. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bundle of rosemary and fresh thyme. You've got to use fresh herbs. Once you use them, you'll never go back to using the other type. They're just awesome. I'll put the bundle over in the corner like that, and then I'll add about a fourth a teaspoon of salt. Not a lot, and you can skip the salt if you need to. It's okay. If you're on a low salt diet, no problem. Now we're going to let that just kind of braise. You don't really turn them, even though I say turn them, what I really mean is you just kind of mix them up, just kind of like this, to let the oils get in there. There, see it's going really nice now. Looking, oh it smells so good. Mm. Now I forgot to tell you one little thing. Now remember how when you pick your vegetables, make sure that you overdo the one the family likes, because in my house, there's never green beans left because my husband takes them first. He loves those braised green beans. And again, you know, it's really nice when you have your the rosemary and the thyme and the flavors just all get. Now we need to put the lid on there. Let that just kind of cook up for a couple of minutes. Adjust the heat as needed again. Not a problem. You're going to have to do that. These vegetables are so good for us. This is a good time. You start your salad, do some other things around the kitchen. Just about a few, two, three minutes is really the braising technique. Then we're going to add about a third a cup to a half a cup of stock. Remember a few weeks ago on the show when we learned how to make the rich vegetable stock? That's the one I'm going to use today. If your family likes chicken stock, that works great. It even tastes great with water. So what I'm going to do is just add about this much in the bottom of our pan. And I've got my stock already, and mm, it's looking good. Actually, I think I kind of want to just mix that up. You can see how the colors are changing as it cooks down. It's beautiful, and it tastes really, really good. Okay, we'll just take some stock, just kind of pour it in here. Now you're going to know that this is done when they're all absorbed up. So we're going to put our lid on and let those flavors all kind of mix in there. And there we go. While that's cooking, we'll talk about the braising technique. Braising literally means to cook in a liquid, but as you see, we haven't added much liquid, so the water in the vegetables is released to steam them naturally. And by not using a high temperature, we're not overcooking and losing the phytonutrients and vitamins. Braising actually brings out the flavor in the vegetables. All three of the vegetables I've used today are superfoods. They're rich in the antioxidant vitamins A, C, E, and K minerals like copper and zinc. They're even a good source of protein and dietary fiber. Cooking them like, like this locks in those nutrients. So that is just such a good thing about cooking. And you know what? Your family's going to love it. So just before serving, here's the little tip of the day that makes this dish set apart from all the others. We're going to mix together. I've got over here I've got a tablespoon of orange juice that I've put in a measuring cup, and you might say, hey, Cindy, why did you use that huge measuring cup for one tablespoon? This is why. You just put in a teaspoon. So this is a tablespoon of orange juice, just a teaspoon of balsamic vinegar, and then just swish it around like this. That works awesome. And then we'll just lift that lid and drizzle over it. And oh, does that make it taste good. Let's see. Oh yes, that's coming along beautifully. So we'll just take this and then just kind of put it over it like this. Mmm. Looking good. Then replace your lid for a couple minutes and let the flavors just all kind of meld together. Mmm, this is so good. And this is something that's really good to use at a family picnic, when you're grilling, or even a holiday dinner. Now to serve this, we're going to serve this family style. So you're going to use tongs or anything that you have that's really tongs work the best as opposed to a spatula. And we're going to put them on a plate or a platter. So let's just see if we can't get this served up for you right now. Oh, they look beautiful. Let's turn down that heat. Actually, I'm just going to move this over here. We have a beautiful platter right here for you. And we'll just take them and scoop them up like this. 
get your keep your vegetables together that way everyone can pick the ones they want and it makes a beautiful presentation as well then we get some green beans in here mmm well I can tell from making the dish for you today I should have made more green beans because there's not going to be many left after the show and then we've got our red peppers our yellow peppers shallots for those of the family that like them Dr. Becker loves them okay and then we'll finish this off with just some sprigs of rosemary and how about a little orange slice that would be really really pretty since we've got oranges in it let's just take that and put that right here and maybe a little thyme and we'll just turn this around so it just looks pretty all right now that is beautiful there you have it I'm telling you this dish is just wonderful it rivals any you'll find in a gourmet restaurant anywhere it's delicious beautiful and will be sure to make your friends think you're a chef well I hope you've enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy your veggies tonight. This dish definitely deserves to be served at a holiday meal or family night dinner. It's just one more way we can put healthy cooking into action for the ones we love. For a copy of today's recipe, log on to HealthyCookingWithCindy.com. Print it off and enjoy and stay tuned because we're going to be right back for more of your health.